Welcome back. Hey, look, you may not be aware that May is Better Hearing and Speech Month, but it's something one local school is celebrating and wants you to listen up and tell your friends all about it. Joining me from the Clark Schools for Hearing and Speech is Cynthia Robinson, the co-director of the school. It's great to see you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. So for those out there who may not know about the Clark Schools, uh, the Clark Schools for uh, Hearing and Speech, what do you guys do and where are you located? We're located in Mandarin. And what we do is we teach children who are deaf and hard of hearing to listen and talk just like their hearing peers do and go into mainstream schools no later than kindergarten or first grade. So that, that's, it's interesting because you, you say you teach children who are deaf or hard of hearing to listen and, and talk and that's something that uh, people say, well, how do you do that? How, how can they learn to do that? Technology is wonderful and it's really changed over the past about 25 years for children. It used to be that if a children had what we call usable residual hearing, we could help them a lot with a hearing aid. But if they were born deaf, there really was not a lot we can do. But now with cochlear implants for children, which hopefully they get around a year old or maybe even a little bit less, we're able to restore their access to sound and train the brain to use that access to develop normal speech and language. So this is very different than, than kind of an old school approach, I would call it, where it was like teach them braille and teach them sign language. Yes, this is, once a child has the right technology, their audiograms, which is, shows you how mm -hmm. their hearing is, look very normal. And so then it becomes the job of the professionals to teach them how to interpret the sound that they're getting. How big of an issue is this? How many kids out there, I mean, in your school, you, you were saying it's a, a small uh, amount of students because you try to get them out and exactly. into regular schools, but how big of an issue is this? Three in every 1,000 children are born deaf or hard of hearing. And most of those children, about 95% of them, are born into hearing families. So they have absolutely no idea what to do. And if they discover that their child can learn to listen and talk just like the rest of their family, that's the option that most of them will choose. Absolutely, because it, it now brings them into the, the family and just more inclusiveness. That's right, and the reason that we're so happy to be here today is to increase community awareness. Um, it's very important to start this process early because there's something called neuroplasticity, which means the brain is ready to learn, and that is very important for spoken language. So it's very important to get these children identified and into appropriate intervention with professionals who are trained to do this work. And like you just said it there, professionals who are trained, and some of the equipment you have here on the desk, um, what, what do you have in front of you there? Well, I have a hearing <laughs> aid, and everybody's sort of used to a hearing aid. Um, I have, because about, about half of our children still have hearing aids. I have a classroom microphone that the teacher's voice goes out to the children. It's much easier for them to hear. Mm -hmm. We can also sync their personal equipment to that microphone. And then I have the external part of a cochlear implant. Okay. So it looks like a hearing aid. There's a magnet implanted inside the head and there's a little array of electrodes that's implanted into the cochlea. This is the battery and the computer. Unbelievable. And uh, the sound comes through the air into the microphone, the computer manages it, sends it into the cochlea, the brain grabs it, and we teach the child to interpret and develop spoken language. You're literally changing lives at this school. This is, this is something that is, is making these kids, you know, be able to assimilate into normal society where they otherwise couldn't. Every dream that their parents had for them when they were born, and all parents do have dreams for their children, those dreams can be fulfilled. Um, all right, so for somebody out there who uh, is, is possibly dealing with this, what age children do you serve? We serve children from birth through age seven in the school program. We serve children in the mainstream, if they need us, all the way up through high school. Mostly they don't, but yeah. they do some of them come back for speech in the clinic. I yeah. love it. Thanks so much for what you guys are doing in our, our community here, and uh, the best place is the website? Yes, at clarkschools.org, Clark with an E, schools with an S. Perfect, and again, we'll post this on our website, firstcoastliving.net, so you can share it with any of your friends who may be dealing with this with their children with speech or hearing issues.